Shalom, shalom, shalom. What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going on with everybody? What's going on with you? Hope everybody doing well. Hope everybody doing well. Shalom, what's going on? What's going on, Sister E? What's going on to the brethren? Uh, what's going on to all the family? Shalom. I'm outside. You know, I generally don't do lives, but it's so beautiful and nice out here. Um, I'm doing a live, and you may hear I live not too far from the airport, so you may hear a couple of planes passing by, whatever. Um, I'm not going to be on here long. I want to talk about some things. Last night, I wasn't able to get on Berean uh, TV last night um, because I was at work, and I work at night, so I wasn't able to get on Berean TV. But I wanted to just, uh, and, and I know th this, this question um, has uh, come up, you know, several times, or people kind of assume, so I just kind of want to, kill the assumptions of uh when it comes down to dealing with um you know dealing with boom and and uh the, you know they've given us a name um uh, within the urban apologetic community the christian apologetics community um they've given us like uh like two or three different names um uh, one of the names uh that they've given us is hebrew christians um and and um christian israelites um They've called us moderates, you know, now. So, you know, those are names that they kind of give give us. Um, it's And this this is not in a, a demeaning or derogatory way. Um, I think it's just kind of something that Brother Berean and maybe some other people just kind of came up with to kind of distinguish us uh, from uh, a lot of the people, I guess, that are out here that, you know, that are kind of, you know, cussing people out and you know those type of things so they brother Berean is doing an excellent job uh, I really appreciate that brother um I think that um you know he's just so authentic and and street with it um I think you need those authentic real people out out here but I want to talk about some things um um just kind of like you know when it comes to the law when it comes to uh the new testament uh, when it comes to those who identify themselves as gentiles um, and again, this is something that I'm, I'm saying that those who identify themselves as Gentiles, because there's a lot of people that don't identify themselves as ethnically Israel. So, um, you know, with that, I mean, that's no, that's not a big deal. Um, that's not a deal breaker or anything like that. That's not something that, you know, one must, um, you know, acknowledge or whatnot when it come down to, you know, those, those things like that. And so I just kind of want to it's just so much stuff going on. Shout out to my brother, IJ West. I'm going to have him on the live soon, man. Um, I'll holler at that brother. Again, excuse me if you hear the planes going in the background. Shout out also to uh, um, uh, a lot of the brothers that are tuning in right now um, uh, on here uh, and whatnot. And so I kind of want to just talk about uh, some things. Um, just kind of like concerning, la again, last night uh, conversation. I really wanted to get on. Um, they, there was questions about, um, you know, how do you know you're, 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 you're ethnically Israel uh, and things like that. And so um, people were, you know, were asking a lot of the Christian apologists were asking, you know, can you do you have proof and things like that. And, and we know we live in a day and age now, of course, you know, kind of like prophecy. You know, when you talk about prophecy, that's kind of like people are kind of, you know, kicking, kicking that back. So. Um, during a day and age when people are kicking that back against you, you know, what well, prophecy it is, what well, we can say that, you know, and now the question has come up about scientific, you know, what well, can you prove scientifically? And, and there are many of us out here who um, can prove scientifically, and that, that has nothing to do with salvation. I just want y'all to understand it has nothing to do with salvation when it comes to that, okay? Um, but what I'm saying is that people are asking these questions and they want to know and but what's occurring is is that when you say yes you can prove you present the dna factors then it's kind of like well okay well that it doesn't matter well you know if it doesn't matter then why ask in the first place you know so we all again um i just want to clear some things up from our position and again um i don't speak for the entire nation of israel you know i don't speak for the entire nation of israel um, all I can say is, and my brother Aza on here, shout out to the Christian Israelites over there, Israel, uh, Israel of God and Israel of Jesus and uh, all my brothers that are out there. Um, you know, you have to understand, you know, people were, you know, at people, and then now, you know, it's kind of becoming a, a thing where people are just like, yo, what is a Christian Israelite? Like, what, what, now, come on, let's, let's really be, let's really be honest. Okay. Let's be honest in our assessment. Okay. Um, everything, you know, pre Nicene council. Um, you have so many writings of different, um, 
you know, those that you consider church fathers or different people like that who were actually ethnically Israel, that also within their writings, they identified as Christian. Now, when we start talking about, you know, is there a difference between Western view, Western uh, theology, Protestant theology versus, um, you know, pre nicene council doctrine, you know, because many of those who were ethnically Israel during the pre nicene pre nicene council period, they identified themselves as Christian, but they were also keeping Sabbath. They was also keeping dietary. They was also keeping these things as a cultural, as a cultural thing. Now, I tell people, and I was telling them last night in the chat, like you can't argue someone's culture. You can't argue that. Now, when we start, we talk about those who identify as following the Messiah or the Mashiach, okay, or Hamashiach or Hamashayach. It depends on what vernacular you use. But what I'm saying is we all know that those who call him Jesus, whether those, we all talking about the Savior or whatever Hebrew name you use. Those who are ethnically Israel, pre nicene council, in their writings, many of them identified as Christian. You can even go to Clement, where Clement is writing and talking and saying that we are the true Christians who are Israelites. Then you also go into um, even within your own, even without our own Bible, which we carry, we know the many who were ethnically Israel was also in the Book of Acts identified as being Christian. So the terminology in which we're talking about here, we're talking about those who follow Hamash Hamashiach or those who follow Christ. Not talking about um, as far as doctrinally things or uh, uh, basically on the West or the Protestant perspective. Okay, there's just different conversations out here. So what I'm saying is this. People laugh, like, what, what is a Christian Israel? Like, oh, what is a Christian? Okay, you're talking about someone who is ethnically Israel, which makes them an Israelite. Then you also talk about someone who accepts the Messiah as their savior, which means they're a follower of Christ. So these were things that you see within these historical writings. And when you talk to people and they say certain things, you can tell that they have not done their hit research historically on what these people mean. Why did they say it and why were they writing? They, when they said they were followers of Christ or when they said that they were Christian, they're not talking about following the Pope. They're not talking about following the Western, the Roman Catholic Church. Many of them who made this statement was before even the Catholic Church even came into existence. So you can tell when people don't know the history and they're just regurgitating things and saying stuff and just flying off the hand and talking all kind of crazy. Okay. We also have to understand this, and I'm just kind of dealing with a couple of things from last night. I can't get to them all, but I want to kind of lay the foundation so people understand. Shalom, uh, Moray Lavanda. I want people to understand this. When we start dealing with cultural things, let's say, for example, like the Limba, as well as many who are Igbo, okay, and as well as Yoruba or Yoruba. Many of them, if you talk to them, also, matter of fact, we have a brother who's part of the, the, the Ethiopian uh, perspective. That's a part of our community. Many of them that you talk to, even the Ethiopians identify as Christian, but they're still keeping it from an Eastern perspective, okay? Many, uh, even the Lemba, who is scientifically and eth ethnically Israel, also identify as Christian, but culturally, they are keeping Torah things culturally because it was a part of their culture. It's a part of the culture. Here's, a, here's another example. Many of you were keeping Christmas and Easter before you even accepted Christ as your Savior. You adopted these things as a cultural thing that you keep. Now, guess what? Fast forward. Many of you accept Jesus as your Messiah. I'm talking to Christians now. Many of you accept him as your Savior and as your Messiah, but you're still culturally keeping Christmas. You're still culturally keeping Easter. And you refuse to put those things down. You refuse, even though you can't find it biblically, you refuse to put those things down because they become, they're a part of your culture that you embrace, but you keep, you say you follow Christ. Well, it's no different than an Israelite who say that he follows Hamashiach and yet he's culturally keeping Passover. He's culturally keeping the feast. He's culturally following the dietary. All of these things, and you want him to put that down, but you refuse to put things down that you can't even find in the Bible. This is the this this is the thing that that that's 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 crazy. 
You can't argue against someone's culture and tell them to stop keeping something culturally. It's no different than the apostles who kept Passover and they followed Hamashiach. They kept Pentecost. So if you didn't, you're not trying to make you're not trying to make Paul put down put down his his keeping the customs. You're not trying to make, you're not you're not going to bring an indictment against Peter for being wrong for keeping his culture. Okay, this is the thing we're arguing culture here. Now this goes to my point. There was someone there was some people within the chat last night, and many Christians asked this thing, or make these statements as fear mongering to to to, men, to to really for a lot of people. Oh, don't follow them Israelites. Don't even talk to them. The moderates, those Christians, Israelites, and, and the moderates and all of them. What's going on? Shout out to uh, my, my brother, Apostle Darrell Fleming. D listen, they, hey, put, they, them Christian Israelites, those Hebrew Christian, those moderates, they're worse than the camps that's on the corner yelling and cussing and talking about the white man, the devil, and everybody going to hell. It's, it, uh, that, that's not an Israelite, and salvation is only for Israel. and all that. They're worse than those guys because they're purposely deceiving because they're keeping their culture. They're going to try to make you throw fringes on. They're going to try to make you keep feast days. They're going to try to do all this. So it's a lot of fear mongering going on by people who don't even understand. Two, it's fear mongering going on by people who never even had a conversation and asked someone who's a moderate or who you deem or call a Christian Israelite or whatever. You haven't even sat down and talked to them and asked them what they believe. Now, last night, shout out to my brother Ron Shields. He was in there in the in the chat too in the group last night um, and whatnot. And so when I sat there and looked at it, I said, listen, none of us, and I'm talking about dope, but because I'm dealing with the moderates now. The moderates, let me just let me just stay here. Boom Church, okay, let me speak for for for, for our congregation at Boom. Let's speak for, let me just speak for that because I don't want to want people to be thinking that I'm sitting around here speaking for everybody, okay? Boom Church, we have an understanding based on the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament is this. And also, based off the Apostles' Doctrine, when it comes to Gentiles in the New Testament, or the Brit Hadashah, you cannot find Anywhere within those teachings where anybody forced a Gentile within the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, you don't see them forcing Gentiles to keep Passover. You don't see them forcing Gentiles to come to Pentecost. You don't see them forcing any Gentile or anyone who identifies as a Gentile to do any of that. To do any of that. What you do find is you find Gentiles asking Israelites to teach them on the next Sabbath. Why? Because Gentiles understood something that you don't that you don't understand. Gentiles within the New Testament understand something that you fail to even realize, that you fail to even accept, that you fail to even understand. They understood that it was culturally obligated for an Israelite to keep Sabbath, but they wanted to know who their who their who, who their Elohim was. So therefore, they say, listen, in order for us to learn about your Elohim, because we believe that he is the way, okay? All right, because he is the way, it's simply this. Teach us on based on your cultural things or based on your cultural obligations, which what I'm saying is this. We know that you keep Sabbath. We want to learn, so teach us on the Sabbath because we know that's the time that y'all meet for study. You don't see them saying, listen, teach us on Sunday or teach us on Wednesday or teach us on Tuesday or teach us on this. Or put, why, why are y'all doing that? Why are y'all keeping this? Why are y'all keeping Sabbath? Why are y'all doing it? Because those Gentiles within the New Testament understood that it was a cultural obligation for them to keep certain things. And this is the reason why you don't see the apostles telling any Gentile or forcing them to keep anything culturally, ethnically Israel because they understood that that's not their obligation. That wasn't an obligation. But here's the thing. If a Gentile wants to keep 
cultural things of Israel and Israelite have an obligation to teach them. Now, if you identify as an Israelite, then an Israelite has an obligation to teach you the cultural things that you're obligated to keep. But if you say, yo, I'm a Gentile, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not keeping that, I'm not following this, I'm not doing that, then I, 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 I'm not obligated. Second, first of all, I'm not obligated. Second of all, I can't make you do anything. But if you want to know, and you want to cleave to Israel, and learn the culture of Israel, and you are a Gentile, I have every obligation, I have every right, and I'm obligated to teach you. Why? Because when you go back to the Torah, you see the same thing going on. If there is a stranger that sojourns with you, he must be circumcised. Because you can't live amongst Israel and attach yourself to Israel and want to know the culture of Israel, but bring your own thing in it too. This is the th this is the same issues that that Shaul and Paul was dealing with within the Colossians with the Gnostics. The Gnostics wanted to keep all of their things and bring also attach themselves, and then they then guess what the Gnostics started doing? The Gnostics started bringing indictment against the Israelites and other people for keeping the cultural customs. That's what Colossians chapter two was about. The Gnostics had an issue with that. And you can't use scripture like Paul, where Paul said that he counted all those things that he know as dung. No, that's he's not. He can't say he counted dung and then keep it at the same time. He can't do that. that he's double-minded. What he's saying is this. He said, everything that I learned from man, everything that I learned from man, because we know that the cultural things of Israel is not man-made stuff, Okay. We're talking about the cultural things that the Most High gave Moshe. We're not talking about the Pharisees adding their own traditions. We're talking about the cultural things that was given to Moses. Okay. Those things came from the Most High. So the thing is that we know that these things are not, don't come from man. So he said, listen, those things I learned as a Pharisee, traditional things that they even added to it. I count those things as dumb. Why? Because this, it's more important for me to know him than to keep a practice of men that's not going to even get me into the kingdom. That's when he said, those things that I learned, he's not saying that those things aren't important and they can't be used or I'm not going to keep Passover, I'm not going to keep the feast, I'm not going to do that because he understood he was culturally obligated to do that. Because he's an Israelite. Now, let's go to scripture real quick. And I'm going to get off of here. All right. Let's go to scripture. Let's go to Acts chapter number 21. Acts chapter 21. I want to read something in your hearing because I want to show you something that's very important. So nobody don't have to ask, are we forcing Gentiles? Are we forcing? See, it's a different approach. Many of the brothers that you see on the corner, they ask people, you know, they use the chart and they ask people, okay, where are you at on this chart? Okay, because the assumption is that every black person that they come in contact with, okay, every black person, all right, every black person that they come in contact with, they deem that they are an Israelite. So their approach is when they see a black person, the first thing they say is, well, who do you know, your father, what, what was your father? Which in reality, th that person actually don't even know what's in their father, okay? Many people don't know what's in their father. They just assume. So they just go by the chart. Oh, well, I'm from the tribe of Judah. And they, then they turn around and say, okay, well, you're supposed to keep friends. You're supposed to wear friends. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to return back to the laws. You know, and those type of things. Because that's the that's the steps that they take. Boom Church does not take those steps. And so the, the question was asked, well, 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 well if it's not, because I, I said last night, I said, well, listen, man. You know, your heritage don't get you in the kingdom. That's, it's not a guarantee that you're going to get in the kingdom because you're an Israelite. It's not a guarantee that you're an Israelite because you're dark-skinned. 
It's not a guarantee. And then some other guy come on there talking about, well, if that's the case, then well, why, well, why your um, why your why your church is all about identity? First of all, this guy don't even know me. This guy don't even he he don't know nothing about me. All he said was he know that I that I identify ethnically as an Israelite. And so the first thing he said, well, why your church this? And I simply said, bro, what are you talking about? And the and the blessing thing about it was there were people who was on out who was on there that was from Boom Church, and many of them like, what are you talking about? We don't even focus on identity. That's it's not even something we teach hardly matter of fact i've only been i've only taught i've only taught identity maybe one time to our congregation and one time um outside well maybe three times outside of our congregation since the congregation been started and the three times that i've taught it okay it was requested to me to teach it and it was at a christian church but when you come to boom you all majority of the people that comes to boom already know they israel so we don't have to we don't have to teach these things all the time. Okay? That's not a subject of the conversation. We already resolved in being ethnically Israel. Okay? And there are other people, okay, who may not know that they Israel ethnically, but yet they wanna they, they wanna learn the scriptures, they wanna learn the culture, they wanna follow the Messiah, the, the Hamashiach. So at the end of the day, we don't treat anybody any different within the congregation. I don't. We don't run around asking, though, do you know you're an Israelite? Do you know this? When you come to Boom, we're teaching on spiritual things. Try, okay, now that you know you're an Israelite, okay, what's next? That's, that's the, we teach the what's next. We teach the one, what's next. And that's why most people who aren't resolved in who they are in the Israelite ethnically, it's hard for them to be a part of Boom because they feel like we're not deep enough. No, we're on the spiritual things of Israel. We're on the circumcised heart things. We already know we're, an Israelite. we're Israelites. We don't have to harbor or teach on that. And so I told him, I said, listen, man, listen. Bruh, you know, go check out my YouTube channel. Go check out my YouTube channel and see how many teachings you see up there. Of me teaching any of that, on any of that type of stuff. Now, if we get someone that comes in, they're a baby, they say, hey, listen, I'm struggling in some areas, you know, I believe I'm an Israelite, but, you know, I'm just trying to get some understanding. Hey, what's, can you answer this question? Can you, can you answer that? Can we, let me tell you something. We don't even run, we don't even, we don't even tell our people to go get DNA tests. We don't even force that on people. I don't, you don't see me right here telling people, y'all better go get your DNA test to make sure that you're in Israel. No, I don't do, we don't, we don't even have that type of conversation. Majority of the people that come to me asking me is because they know I, I had a DNA test. And I didn't need the DNA test for myself. I was already resolved that I was an Israelite. But I wanted to get that test, okay? I wanted to get the test done because people kept asking me because they didn't believe Prove it. Prove it. Go get your DNA test. This is what all the Christian apologists that was coming at me saying. Go get your DNA test. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. And then I go get it and then come back. And guess what happens? They say, well, it don't matter. There's neither Jew nor Greek. So then guess what? I knew you was going to say that anyway. So now it did, it, it did, it, for, so now it's become a blessing to other people. So when I'm out teaching, teaching history, teaching prophecy, and teaching the ethnicity, I use my DNA as a form of showing them who I am, not saying that all of y'all in here are, are Israelites. That's not what I teach. That's not what I teach. That's not what we don't teach. We don't teach that at Boom. Okay? But let's go to scripture. Acts 21, and we're gonna get we're gonna get up out of here. Acts 21, and we're gonna start at uh, verse 17, Acts 21 and verse 17. Look what it says. When we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day, okay, you know Jerusalem is the headquarters. So you already know that the apostles are there. Peter, James, all them brothers that are there. All them brothers who walk with Hamashiach is there. Okay, Paul and Barnabas and all them cats rolled up to, we see in Acts chapter number 15, we see that they even came to Jerusalem concerning some things dealing with circumcision. That's a whole nother conversation. We'll get into that later on. But I want to show you something. This, this is the scripture that we use as a foundation when it comes down to the approach that we take in our congregation. Okay? Here it is right here. Because people want to know, you're forcing 
You're gonna, they're gonna force it on you. They're gonna make you wet fringes. They're gonna make you do all this. And they're gonna do all that. You, y'all are Hamites. Y'all are Gentiles. You're not an Israelite, and they're in bondage. So you're trying to tell me culturally I'm in bondage, but yet you won't say that Paul was in bondage. Then you'll pull out a scripture and say, well, Paul said, if you try to keep any aspect of the law, that you are in bondage. And that, but yet the same Paul that you're talking about is the same one that went to the feast. Is the same one who was keeping the dietary. Is the same one who was a Pharisee, a Pharisee who knew the law in and out. He was keeping all these customs and things, but yet you try to say that Paul said, well, you ain't got to keep all this. You ain't got to keep all that. Well, maybe Paul is talking to you. Don't try to don't try to use Paul because Paul wasn't a, wasn't a disobedient Israelite. He understood culturally and ethnically. He understood how to teach Israelites, but he also understood dealing with Gentiles. That's why I say he's the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, but let's look at what it says here in verse number uh, seventeen. It said, "When we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us." Verse number eighteen. Look what it says. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James. All right, so we see that James is there. And boy, it's humid out here already. Goodness gracious. All right, Atlanta, it is humid out this month. All right, but let's look at this. It says, verse number 18, And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. Listen, listen to this. Who's there? You got Paul and all the elders. Now, listen, I want y'all to check out this conversation. Because this conversation about ministry, this conversation is about what's going on in ministry because everyone has their lane. See, 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 see this, this, is what brother, this is what I'm trying to get brothers to understand. We all have a lane in which we function in. Paul understood his lane and his assignment was to the Gentiles. Doesn't mean that he's limited. Doesn't mean that if he run across some Jews or some Israelites, he can't teach them, okay? Doesn't mean he can't teach them. He understands, he understands, okay, that Peter is called and his lane is to the Jews. So they understand this off top. There's no disagreement. Ain't nobody hating on nobody because they called to one group of people to teach them. But in today's time, we got brothers hating on other Israelites because they know their assignment, who they call to, and majority of the ones who don't understand their own assignment trying to bang on the ones who do. These brothers understood this. These brothers understood the callings. So guess what? Look what they said. In verse number 19, look at what it says here. It says, and when he had saluted them, meaning Paul saluted the brothers, he declared particularly, he I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this slow for you so you can understand this. Look what, look what Paul says. Look what it said that Paul did. It says in tw verse 20 of Acts 21, and when they heard it, I mean, let's go back to 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things Yah had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. He didn't say amongst the Israelites. He didn't say amongst the Israelites. He's declaring how the Most High is using him amongst people that are not culturally connected to the Israelites, who know their culture. This is his assignment. Why? Because when you go back to when you go back to the Exodus, what, what, what was it? What was it? What was doing Exodus? You had Israelites and you had those who were non-Israelites who were also a part of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Then you turn around and you have doing the Babylonian and all these other captivities, you had Israel being scattered. You had Hellenized Israelites. So now Paul has an assignment. He's teaching Israelites who are Hellenized, okay? And he's also teaching natural blood Gentiles like Trophimus. Okay, he's teaching all, he, this is his assignment. This is his particular assignment, his emphasis in his area. It doesn't mean that he ain't keeping the customs. It doesn't mean that he's going against Israel. That's not what he's talking about. He understands what his assignment is and how to teach them. Okay? So let's read. Look what it says right here. In verse number 19, it says, And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things Yah had wrought among the Gentiles 
by his ministry. Verse number 20. Now, now listen to the brothers. Listen to the brothers now. Listen to Peter and all the apostles there who were the head over the church. Okay, who were the head over the assembly. Paul was not the head over the assemblies. Paul was not the head of Jerusalem. Paul reported or came and consulted with the elders and the leaders. Paul just wasn't running around here acting crazy doing what he want to do. Paul wasn't saying, bump y'all. I got more authority than y'all. No, Paul understood protocol. And he understood who was in charge and who was an authority over the church. And that's why he came in Acts 15, him and Barnabas came to Jerusalem to see and get orders or get, get clarity from Peter and all the other elders concerning circumcision and salvation. Now he's meeting up with them again in Acts chapter 21. And he's doing the same thing. He's declaring to them what the Most High is doing. He was not the authority over Jerusalem. I'm I hope y'all understand this. I love Paul. I believe in all his writings and all his letters. I believe in it wholeheartedly. But y'all not going to sit up here and act like Paul was the authority over all the Israelites. And his word superseded theirs. You're not going to do that. Because he understood he had to come to them. Everybody got to follow somebody. Everybody fall under somebody. Everybody got to answer to somebody. Everybody gets understanding and gets and gets instructions from somebody. So now look at what Paul's doing. Look at what look at right here in Acts. Okay. It says right here. In Acts chapter number 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Elohim and said unto him, Thou seest, brother. How many thousands of Jews which are, which believe, and are all zealous of the law? Now listen, I want y'all to check this out. Notice Paul didn't say that the Gentiles were zealous of the law. Notice it was the elders who were Israelites who assignment was to the Israelites. Notice that. I want y'all to notice this. Pay attention to what the word is saying. Let's exegete. Ain't no eisegeting here. Okay, let's exegete the text. Let's break it down to see what it says. Let's break it down to see what it exactly says. Right here in Acts chapter number 21, I'm going to read to you. You got a conversation between what is going on within the church. You have a conversation which is going on within the, with, amongst the Gentiles by Paul's ministry. And you have a conversation that's going on with, the, with Peter and all the other elders who assignment, okay, was also to the Israelites. The Most High is using two, two, two Israelites, okay, using two Israelites to reach two different groups of people to bring them all to the kingdom. Remember, this is about the assembly. This is going right back to where it was in Acts, where there was Gentiles. I'm sorry, not Acts, but but in in Exodus, where there was not, where there were natural blood Israelites, ethnically Israelites, but also there were other. It was Gentiles or strangers who weren't Israelites who also was a part of the Exodus and who also agreed to keeping aspects of the Torah. So us at Boom Church, we don't force nobody. We follow Acts chapter 21. We don't force nobody. That identifies ethnically as a Gentile. It don't matter if there's a bloodline Israelites and find out later on. But we don't force anybody to act. We don't force you to put fringes on. If you say you are ethnically an, a, a Gentile, ain't nobody forcing you to put no fringes on. Ain't nobody forcing you to do nothing. Ain't nobody forcing you to do anything. We have Israelites out here, okay, who identifies Israelites that still believe in, hey, look, we ain't got to keep none of the Torah. And we still can't force them to do anything. No one has that capability or ability to do that. So I want y'all to understand something here, okay? There were cultural things that we keep as Israelites that Gentiles are not obligated to keep. They're not obligated to keep. So let's keep reading here Acts chapter 21. Look what it says right here. It says in verse number 21, Acts 21, 21. I'm sorry, Acts 21 and 20. And they heard it and they glorified the Elohim or the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews which, which are, there are which believe. So now, these particular Israelites didn't believe one time at one time. Check this out. 
These Israelites did not believe in Hamashiach or believe in the Christ or believe in Jesus or Yeshua before. Until here comes the other Israelites who have the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, who comes and gives a demonstration. So now guess what? Now you have these particular Israelites who didn't believe one time before who were still keeping the customs of their culture but now they believe in Hamashiach as savior first, then cultural second. So now you got them saying, you got the brothers declaring, you got those who are Israelites who are assigned to the Israelites and winning them to the kingdom. They say, brother, they say, Paul, he says, and said to him, thou seest brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. Notice this. Notice that the elders didn't say they believe and they abandoned the law. Because there are certain aspects within the law that is required as an Israelite to keep culturally. Notice they didn't abandon that, nor did the apostles tell them to abandon it. But you notice Paul didn't say anything about the Gentiles being zealous of the law. Because there are cultural things that Gentiles aren't required to keep. So at Boom Church, we don't force nobody. If you say you identify as a Gentile, you identify as a Gentile. Hallelujah. And if you want to come keep the Passover with us, cool. It, listen, if you are a Gentile pastor identifying as a Gentile, and you say, listen, I want my church to keep the Passover. You ain't in bondage because of that. We will come and, and, and we will come and we'll have Passover with you. We, Boom Church will come and have Passover with you. We don't have no problem with that. We don't have no problem with that at all, period. Because let me explain something to you. According to scripture, according to the prophet, we're going to be keeping feast days in the kingdom anyway. So you can identify as a Christian, you can identify as an Israelite, all you want. You, When you, you get in that kingdom, we're going to be keeping feast days anyway. We're going to be keeping it anyway. So we can keep it here and get practice. Okay, or you can keep it in the kingdom. It don't matter to me. It, it, listen, it doesn't matter to me at all. It doesn't matter to me at all, period. Okay, but let's look at it. Let's, let's keep reading here, okay? Look what it says. Verse number 21, all right? It says, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews which are among. Listen to this. I want y'all to listen to this. So these people who are ethnically Israel, who accept that Christ is their Messiah, Okay. Who's kept who 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 are who are who, who follow Christ the Messiah and keeping the Torah and keeping out cultural things within the Torah. Listen to what it says. He said, Paul, he said, listen, these people, because think about I want y'all to understand something. Think about this. Paul and the teachings that he was doing and the places where he was going, he was going into places that was not popular amongst Israelites. Now, I want y'all to check this. Listen to what I'm saying. I want y'all to check this out. His name traveled and spread so much. But people, there, were, there was so much murmuring going on. Some people even thought he was compromised. This is when we start dealing with Acts, okay? Right here, Acts 21, all the way to Acts 26. There were some people, there were some people, the murmuring was so loud, there were some people thought he was compromising. And they started to begin to come up against him and, and build and build little organizational structures to try to take him down and discredit him, even though. They went around really to see the work. They were just going on by what people were saying, getting into gossip, listening to what people were saying. I'm going to prove it to you right here. Okay, let's look what it says. It says, verse 21, it says, And they were informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews which are among Gentiles. Why? Because you also had Israelites who were Hellenized, scattered, who was still amongst Gentiles. But you also had in that region, in that area, 
where Paul was teaching, you had other Jews that was in those areas that were, that were near to Gentiles. Okay, in those same areas. So they're saying, listen, people are bringing an indictment against you, Paul. This is what the elders are saying. They're bringing an indictment against you that you're teaching Jews, which are among Gentiles. Why? Because I'm pretty sure if Paul is out teaching Gentiles, I'm pretty sure it was a crowd of Jews that were standing around listening to what Paul was teaching. Then you had these other Jews, these other Israelite spies and minions following him, not for the sole purpose of the ministry work that he's doing, because there's a lot of people that follow you, that get on your live, that watch your videos. They ain't following you all because they believe in what you're teaching. Many of them are following you to bring indictments against you. They were doing the same thing to Paul. They were doing the same thing to Christ. You had Paul teaching these Gentiles. For one, you have to understand something. He has to teach them baby steps anyway. They don't understand nothing. And they still are dealing with idols. So he got to teach. First of all, he got to get them to take, put the idols down. You want somebody to start keeping Passover and all these other things. And they still, they haven't even gotten the courage, the spirit having matured to even put the idols down. And you trying to get them to throw, you trying to get them to do all this other stuff in two months that you ain't do. It took you 20 years and you want them to do it in two months. This is why I tell these babes, listen, the, the listen, the best thing you can do when you wake coming to who you are is shut up. Keep your mouth closed. Because your first year, you're gonna be so emotionally wrecked. And the second year, you ain't, you're not going to even know what you believe doctrinally because there's so many different Israelite teachings out here and teachers. So listen, go sit down, keep your mouth closed, okay? Get your theology under control, and then maybe your spirit man will be able to teach you and take you off into your assignment. But you out here trying to beat mama over the head. You, the first thing you do, you go watch a documentary and you watch somebody on YouTube for two, three months, and now you want to come challenge your pastor and tell your uncle this and, and tell your mama that she shouldn't be doing this and doing that and all kind of other stuff. And you do, all you doing is being a, a tool in Hasatan's hand. Killing your witness before you even get your understanding down. You done killed your witness before you even got your understanding down. Okay, let's keep reading. Look what it says here. We're going we to finish up here. It says right here in verse number um, 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews which are among Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children neither to walk after the customs. Listen, he listen. Look, 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 what, look what the indictment was. The indictment wasn't that you were teaching Gentiles to forsake the customs. The indictment was you was teaching Jews to forsake the customs. This was a concern for the elders. Because why was it a concern? Because they knew that Jews had to keep things culturally and keep customs. If... They wouldn't have said nothing to Peter, I mean, nothing to Paul, if, they was, if, if it was dealing with Gentiles. No, the indictment is you're teaching Jews this. Knowing doggone well that Jews are supposed to keep cultural things. That's why Peter was keeping Passover, I mean, keep, keeping Pentecost, Acts chapter number two. That's why you see all these other brothers. Paul said, listen, hey, I'll holler at y'all later. I'm glad we met on the first day of the week because it's the only time I can get here is meeting on Sunday. I can only meet y'all on Sunday because I got to go do some work. So I'm going to meet y'all on Sunday if y'all want to bless me with something. Y'all want to bless me with something? This is the only day I can see y'all on Sunday. We can meet on Sunday, but I got to go. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I need to leave right now because I must keep this feast. This is what Paul said. I must keep this feast. I don't see y'all banging on Paul for keeping the for keeping the feast. But it's another brother identify another to say, well, I'm an Israelite. I'm going to keep the feast. You, oh, you in bondage. Oh, you going to hell, you of the devil, and all this other stuff. How you gonna tell another person who's ethnically an Israelite who keep Israelite customs that they are devil when you won't even put that th same thing on Paul for keeping it? And you say that Paul, y'all use Paul to supersede everybody else. And yet, you will turn around and sit up here and won't even bring the indictment against Paul. This is the hypocrisy and the respecters of persons that I be talking about. Y'all not even keeping New Testament. Let's read. 
It says right in verse 21, it says, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews which are among Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to be circumcised, not to be circumcised, their, uh, not circumcised their children, neither walk after the customs. But look at verse number 22. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Paul, listen, the multitude gonna get together. They're gonna hear, they're gonna hear about you. They already riled up. The people are already mad because you're right here teaching Jews and Israelites they shouldn't be keeping culture. Okay? So therefore, they mad at you. They mad at you, Paul. Look what it says, verse number 23. Do therefore that now listen what the elders say. Listen what Peter them tell him now. I want you to listen what Peter tell him. Listen what Peter and the other elders that are at Jerusalem tell Paul. Do therefore this that we say to you. Do what we say, Paul. Because Paul, your authority does not supersede the council at Jerusalem. Your authority, okay, we know you was a Pharisee of Pharisees, but guess what? It's, 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 it's levels to this. We walk with the Messiah. We done been in the truth longer than you by the Spirit, okay? So therefore, we under, you understand, Paul, and Paul, th Paul perfectly understood that he had to come and deal with any moves, or anything that was made, anything that was taught in error, or anything that he heard out here that was teaching that he thought was heretical. He went and he went to the Jer Jerusalem Council with Peter and James and all the rest of them so that way he can get an understanding before any moves that, he's, that he made. Paul might have knew, hey, listen, this is dead wrong. But you know what? Paul didn't run out here and just open his mouth and go against it. No, Paul went right to the council and found out what was the next move that he must do. Now, listen to what they tell him. They told him, it says right here, do therefore this that we say to you. For we have four men which have a vow on them. So now, Paul, listen, we got four Israelites. And these Israelites got Nazarite vows on them. That's according to the book of Numbers, which is in the law. They got a Nazarite vow. Okay, these four brothers got a that's right vow on them. He said, take them. Listen what he said. Take them and purify thyself. Take them and you, you go purify yourself with them because you got a Nazarite vow on you. So you need to go and purify yourself with them. Keeping the law because that's in the law. Okay. And be at charge with them that they may shave their heads. OK, for all y'all brothers out here talking about it's wicked for shaving your head. It's wicked for getting a line up. The most high just confounded you because guess what? He already done, he already telling them doing the that's right. They got to shave their head so we can throw that doctrine out the window. Oh, brother, you got a bald head. Oh, you going to hell. You ain't keeping Torah. Well, the most high just told them to shave their head, which is a part of the Nazarite vow. OK, so let's throw that out the window. Let's not talk about that no more. Cause That's gone. OK, now let's keep reading. Look what it says. It says, shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed. So all these Israelites that are talking and murmuring, they'll know that you're keeping Torah, Paul. They'll know that you're not teaching Jews not to keep the custom, Paul. So go ahead and go with them and make sure that you keep the customs. Okay. They didn't say that this was bondage. They didn't say, man, forget them people, man. Forget them people, Paul. You know what? Don't worry about them. We're going to ride on them. Don't worry about We're going to ride on them. Forget them folks, man. We ain't got to worry about them. Don't forget them. No, they said, go keep, keep the culture of the Israelites so that the people can calm down and know that you're not teaching against the culture. Okay, let me back this up. This sun is like banging me. All right. All right. Look what it says in verse number 20, 20, uh, 24. Take heed and purify thyself with them and be at charge with them that they may shave their heads. And all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing. That means you're not keep. They, they're saying, listen, if you do this, they're going to know that that's just a rumor because you're still keeping the customs, even though you believe in Hamashiach. Okay. Verse number um, 20, 24. That they all may know these things were of and form concerning thee are nothing but thou thyself also walk us orderly and keep us the law. Wait a minute. This is Peter. Clearly, surely Peter would have been the main one to say, listen, Jews or Gentiles don't have to keep the law because the law is bondage. If anybody should have known that, that should have been Peter. Peter should have said that. But no, Peter's concern is. That Paul, they're saying you're teaching Jews not to keep customs. 
Peter ain't Peter concerned not with Paul teaching Gentiles they shouldn't keep it because he already know that Gentiles weren't given the extent of the Torah, weren't given the extent of the customs, weren't given the extent of the culture because they're not a part of the culture. They're not bloodline. They're not ethnically Israel. So we don't run around here telling people who are not ethnically Israel or who don't identify as ethnically Israel, you need to keep the law, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do... No, that's not what we do. We don't run around here doing that. And any Christian apologist, you out here wondering or concerned, now you got a video hearing it out of our mouth. Because we keep telling y'all this and y'all don't get it. You just keep wanting to throw everybody in the same category, okay? You just don't get it, okay? You just don't get it. So now we got a video... Okay, so you can hear and see what I'm talking about. We don't run around here telling Gentiles or anybody identifies a Gentile, they need to throw on fringes, they need to keep this, they need to keep that because they are not culturally, ethnically obligated. And this is why we're reading Acts 21. Boom, church, we follow Acts 21 when it comes down to Gentiles and Israelites. Now, again, like I said, if there's a Gentile who wants to learn the customs and the culture of Israel, and they decide they want to keep it, okay? All right, if they want to keep it, I have an obligation to teach them. But I'm not obligated to go around telling all these folks, you need to do this, you need to do that. I don't even ask people, do you think you're an Israelite? I don't ask that kind of stuff because the people that come to our congregation, okay, are people who already resolved that they're Israelites. And so now we're like, okay, you, you know that you're an Israelite? So now let's teach you the spiritual things. Let's teach you those things. Okay, now what? Let's teach you the now what? You've already, now it's time for you to elevate spiritually. You understand who you are ethnically. Now let's grow spiritually. That's why we don't teach all that. All, we don't, we, man, I can't even, I don't even know when the last time I even, I don't even think I even taught Deuteronomy 28 but one time. Within, within boom. And so it's important for people to understand this. Okay, let's finish up. We're almost done. Acts 21 and verse number 25. As touching the Gentiles. Now, now you, listen to this now. Okay, the first conversation in Acts chapter 21 and verse 18. Look at what it says here. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, verse number 20. Look at what it said. Acts 21, 19. Let's jump to Acts 21. Let's go back to 21 and 19 so that we can show you the order of how they're dealing and teaching these things. Okay? Listen to what it says. Acts 21 and 19. And when he had saluted them, he had particularly, he had declared particularly what things God had brought amongst the Gentiles by his ministry. He didn't say anything about the law teaching the Gentiles. But verse number 21, look what it says. In verse number 20. It says, and then they start talking about in verse number 20, they started talking about the Jews or the Israelites and them keeping the law. Look what it says. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto them, Thou brother seest, brother, how many thousands of the Jews which are that which believe and are all zealous of the law. Paul didn't say anything about Gentiles being zealous of the law. But in verse number 20, the Israelites were zealous of the law. And keep and accept in Hamashiach or Christ as their savior. Okay. Now, when we get over here to verse number 24, we jump down to verse number 24. The Peter and the elders are telling Paul to follow certain cultural things because he's an Israelite to show the other Israelites that he's not teaching against the law when these when it concerns teaching Israelites. They aren't concerned about him teaching Gentiles the law. They're saying you're teaching Israelites not to keep the law, which is a cultural thing, even if they accept Hamashiach. Okay, now jump over here to verse number, verse number, verse number 25. Now they're going to deal with the Gentiles. They are dealing with things in order as they come. So there's a concern here in Acts 21 about Paul teaching Gentiles not to keep the law. But then there's also a concern of, okay, what the Gentiles should they keep? Now let's look at this. Okay, verse number 25. Let's see what the elders say what Gentiles should do. As touching the Gentiles, which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. What? Observe what such things? Things such as Nazarite vows. Okay? Things, because they said the custom, you're teaching Jews not to keep circle. Things such as Passover. 
things such as Pentecost, things such as Feast of Tabernacles, things such as a, a, a Feast of Dedication and all these other things. Because these are customs and cultural things that an Israelite is obligated to keep because it's a part of the nation. And what the nation keep in honor of the Israelite Messiah. And they see y'all gonna get mad when I say Israelite Messiah. Y'all wanna take, y'all just wanna throw that out like he's just like he when he came, he didn't come through the bloodline of Israelites. Y'all don't wanna y'all, y'all wanna throw that oh, he died for the world. Ain't nobody arguing about that, but you're not gonna abandon him being an Israelite because that's very significant and important for why Israelites keep certain cultural things. That's not something that Gentiles are to are even concerned with. You got salvation, you've been adopted in, you've been engrafted in. So look what it says in Acts chapter number 21. Gentiles in Acts 21, 25 are not obligated to keep cultural things that Israelites keep. This is why in Acts 21, they're telling Paul, make sure you go keep these cultural things so that the people will know that you're not teaching Israelites not to keep the customs and the culture. But since, since, since you're teaching Gentiles, Paul, let's, let us help you or let us give an understanding so that the council can hear and the people that are listening that there are certain things that Gentiles or those who identify as Gentiles don't have to keep. And so we at Boom, we don't have to, we don't, we don't throw that type of stuff on people at our church. We don't, if you walk through the door, we won't know that you don't believe you're an Israelite unless you tell us. We don't, when you walk through our door, our church door, don't nobody ask you, are you an Israelite? Because our concern is your salvation. We don't care if you Jew, Gentile, whatever. We don't sit up there and ask people, are you an Israelite? Are you this? Are you that? Do you know who your father is? You know, a bloodline. We don't ask that type of stuff. We don't go through that process. We understand the makeup of the church. So let's get let's get some understanding here. Okay? Let's see here. Acts 21 and 25. As touching the Gentiles, we believe we we have written and concluded. Listen to what it says. You can take this to the bank. It's written out. Here's the elders, here Peter and James. Listen to what the elders are saying. What they telling Paul. And the other people who listening. Listen to what he's saying. As touching as touching the Gentiles, which believe those Gentiles, because remember Acts 21, 19, there were Gentiles who believed. Acts 21 and Acts 21 and 20. Acts 21 and 19, Gentiles believe. Acts 21 and 20, Israelites believe. But these Israelites in 21 was also keeping the customs and they believed in Christ. The Gentiles in Acts chapter 21, 19, they believed in Christ. They weren't obligated to keep certain customs. So now they're saying, listen, we got two different people who believe, two ethnic groups that make up the church, that make up the assembly, that believe. One, have customs and obligations culturally that they have to keep. Two, if these Gentiles who want to be a part of the body of Christ, they cannot bring their idolizations in here. They can't bring these idols in here. They can't bring any of those type of things in here, okay? But they don't have to keep the feast. Now, if they want to keep the feast, all praises to the Most High. If they don't, all praises to the Most High. You ain't obligated culturally to do that because you're not a part of the culture. But there were Gentiles with the pre-Nazian pre period, there were the, the, the church itself, the Gentiles included, many of they all they all was on the same page. They were keeping and many of the Gentiles they was keeping Sabbath. Because they knew the Israelite met on the met on the Sabbath, they're part of the body. They were they were meeting on the Sabbath, pre Nazi council. Many of them were keep were keeping feast days and all that type of stuff a part of Israel. It was no different in the Book of Acts. They was keeping feast days with the Israelites. But now in today's time, those who claim to be ethnic to Israel, y'all want us to throw down the culture, when nobody in the scriptures did that. You refuse to put down your Christmas. You refuse to put down your Easter. You refuse to put down Thanksgiving. You refuse to put down all these things. And brothers are like, okay, cool. That's what you want to do, fine. But then when it comes to us, you like you in bondage because you keep in Passover. You in bondage because how are you going to argue my culture? How can you argue someone else's culture? You can't argue that. 
That's that. That is not even on the table for argument. That is not on the table. And no Israelite is going to put those things down because that's a cultural thing for them. You're not going to do that. Let's finish it up. Verse number 25, for Acts 21, as touching the Gentiles which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. They don't have to get Nazarite vows. They don't have to go through those things. Okay, save only, listen to what it says. Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols. You're not bringing your idols within Israel because that's a no-no. You're not, you're not, you're not going to bring your, you're not going to be, this again, this is the, this is the, th this is why the, this is why the church had a big problem in the first century with the Gnostics. They want to believe in Hamashiach, but then they started bringing indictments against the Israelites who was keeping customs. Israelite customs. They were banging on them for that, keeping Sabbath and, and going against them for keeping uh, drink offerings and meat offerings, all this type of stuff. They was going at them hard about that. But then they, they was on their Gnosticism at the same time. Okay, let's keep reading. Look what it says right here. Let's see here. It says right here. It says, stay away from all things off of the idol and from blood. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Many of y'all who are New Testament Christians and, and all these certain things, y'all still around here eating steak with blood on it. That, that's what I'm saying. This, this is what I'm talking about. You want to say that brothers in bondage for keeping cultural th obligations and y'all still around here as Christians say y'all follow the laws of Christ, y'all follow the apostles doctrine and many of y'all eating steaks with blood and all on the table you sipping, you you sopping it with the blood and your food all this kind of stuff, there's no testament and the apostles say y'all can't do that and y'all identify as Gentiles and y'all still eating steak with blood in it, y'all not even keeping that the brothers made it easy for you and y'all still can't even keep that Oh, well, you just pray over what goes in you, don't defile you, and all this other stuff. Stop that. I was, I was out to eat with a Christian brother, and the brother was, the brother ordered a steak. I mean, a nice steak. He got blood all on the doggone table and all kind of stuff, all on the doggone plate. I said, man, let me, hey, I need my steak medium well, medium well, okay, with no blood. And I always take my fork and cut it. And I, I don't even, if it's too pink, I don't even eat it. But definitely ain't no blood. That brother said up there, hey, man, I love mine when it, you got, it got to have blood coming out of it. I said, hey, you a Christian? I mean, come on. Shout out to my brother, Michael Holloway, man. Shout out to my brother over there, man. My Christian brother over there. Love, shout out to him, man. One love, man. This is this what I'm saying. Y'all not even keeping this. And then Paul tell you you can't be a respecter of persons. Dog James tell you you can't be a respecter of persons. Y'all ain't even keeping respect of I mean, these are easy, simple things. Y'all not even keeping respect of persons. You're not even keeping stuff without the blood on it. All this kind of stuff. These are, these, these are, these are basic things, beloved. These are basic things. This is what I'm saying. And then you want to come against another brother who's an Israelite for not keeping, for, for doing certain things and keeping come cultural things. This is all I'm saying, man. We got to stop playing. See, this when you get an understanding, when you have the Ruach, when you have the Holy Spirit, you sit down, you reason, have discussions. Let me tell y'all something. The best discussions are not on camera because everybody ain't playing to the crowd. I'm always open to talking to brothers. I'm not trying to put nobody. That's why I don't do, I don't do diss videos on people. I don't try to make nobody look bad. You can't reach people if you if you if you attacking them. That don't make sense. You can't sit down and have healthy dialogue and conversation if everybody in their feelings. That's why the best conversations are not on camera. I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all a prime example. Me and Apostle Darrell Flynn, man, we don't we don't I mean we don't bump heads. We don't talk about certain things. But one thing he, that brother can never say that I've done to him. 
I have never put him on blast. I have never tried to make him feel bad. I have never done any of those things. And then when I went down to Alabama, when I met him for the first time, man, we hugged and embraced. I sat down. We talked to Heritage. I talked to Heritage class down in Alabama. We laughed, tripped out, all these type of things. That's why I say, man, and then now, look, we, we still, we go back, and then we find out we agree on a lot of things. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. Man, man, we sit down, we said we start talking on the phone, laughing, and we start finding out, man, we agree on a lot of things. It's a lot of things. And he's a Christian that he don't even that he agree with when it comes down to certain cultural things. And this is what I'm saying. This is how you reach people. This is how you have conversation. This is what opened up door because you don't know later on, somewhere down the road, the, the light come on. The most high be like, he be like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I didn't even think about it that way. And it just come through just because of the relationship that you built. And it's something that you might have talked about two, three years ago. All of a sudden, now the light come on. And then brother call you up and say, man, you know what, man, I was wrong about that. Or such a, oh, what you think about this? Because this is what I'm getting from this. And then you sit down, you reason and have dialogue and conversation. And then next thing you know, people start getting impacted and reached. And next thing you know, you find yourself having more in common and everybody banging because you don't want to seem like, well, I agree with that Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody to even hear anything because I want all the Hebrews to look the same. See, that's being a devil, man. That's not right, man. That's a shout out to Brother Berean, man, who, who, who trying to get brothers and sisters together, man. You know what I'm saying? With, within, the, within the kingdom, man. Trying to get brothers and sisters together. All right, let's finish this up right here. All right. Verse 25. As touching the Gentiles, we believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication, all right? All of these things that they're saying is in the law. All of these things that they're telling them to do is in the law. It's in the same law that Moses gave, okay? Now, these laws are not Moses' laws. They're just identified as that because it was given to him and it was passed down. And then a lot of the Israelites looked at Moses as almost a savior, as, as their idol. They, I mean, they, many of them worship Moses. Okay, so you start seeing the law of Moses as a distinctor and an identifier. Okay, so when you start looking at um, scripture and you start going back and you start looking at from when, um, when Christ said, listen, he said, listen, you love your neighbor as yourself. That's something that he gave to Moses. That wasn't something new that he came and brought. That was something that was already in, 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 the, in the laws that was given to Moses for Israel and the stranger that was amongst Israel. Okay, you love each other as you love yourself to keep order within the community. Okay, so that wasn't something that was new. Okay, and then you then you love the Most High. You don't put no other body, no no other God before Him. That's in that's in Exodus twenty. That's the first commandment. So if you do these two things, all of the law is hinged upon these two things because the vast majority of the law is loving God and loving your brother. So it's easy and simple. The Most High Christ just what He did was He just compartmentalized. Okay, everything into two things. He broke it down to make it easy. He said, look, okay, I know these 613. Some of these was for specifically for the priests. Okay, and there's other things because I want to do a whole lesson. I'm, it's going to take me a long time because I want to kind of go through and look at all the laws and what was initially for the priests and what was for the common Israelite. There was a lot of things that wasn't all that wasn't just strictly for the just common Israelite or the stranger. Okay, so this is all I'm saying is this. Okay. We have to understand this thing, man, and stop getting our feelings and stop trying to represent our sect and represent the text. The problem is more people trying to represent their sect and not representing the text. OK, that's the reason why so much feuding and arguing. All right. Now, let's finish up here. All right. Because I I wanted to be done with this thing. But the most high is moving. Uh, hallelujah to the most high and his glorious son. Okay, let's look at this. All right, let's finish up. All right. Verse number 26. Then Paul took the men and the next day purifying him, himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered and for one and for every one of them. And I closed the book, beloved. All right, man, I hope this lesson really bless you because I'm just kind of sick and tired of people just putting words in our mouth and saying that we just, you know, we, we got an agenda and some hidden agenda and we're going to make y'all do this and make make y'all do that and and, and all, all this type of stuff, man. It's like, man, ain't nobody trying to make y'all do nothing. But you can't sit up here and say we all the same or that we're trying to bring people in bondage. No, because there is a sin problem, okay? There is a sin problem. 
And all of us that call ourselves believers, we have an obligation to address these things. Okay? If somebody is fornicating, and we got an obligation to say, listen, brother, you shouldn't be fornicating. That's something that he, that's something that the, that the apostles even told Pete, told Paul. Like, listen, they need to stay away from fornication. Because you know why? Fornication leads to lusting. Not only that, when you lust after something, you can also end up uh, turning into, again, my question is, was, was this in church infancy? We can go from there. I will right, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, but of course, the book of Acts is 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 the start of the church. Okay, and what what I mean is, I'm talking about as far as after Hamashiach, after Christ ascended. Okay, now we're not talking about the church that was in the wilderness. Okay, even though it was still compiled and made up of Gentiles as well as Israelites. Okay, what I'm saying is, this is where the church started, the New Testament or the, the renewed covenant church. Okay, it started there. That's why I tell people. Before you get into Paul's letters, okay, before you get into any of his letters, you need to make sure you have a thorough understanding of the book of Acts. And this is what I try to say. And I'm talking about not with a hidden agenda, not trying to bend scripture and all kind of stuff. No, have a thorough understanding of the book of Acts because the book of Acts is going to explain to you that Paul was not teaching against the law. Okay. It's just that there were many people he was teaching. Okay. Paul was coming up. He was, he was coming up against a lot of stuff. OK, he was catching a lot of heat from both from both sides. OK, so there was certain and every church wasn't dealing with the same thing. And this is why we can't take a letter from Corinthians and try to make that letter fit in the Romans, because these churches were dealing with different issues. You can't take Colossians and, and make Thessalonians deal with the same issue. They had different issues that they were dealing with. And these were people that Paul was writing to who he had been teaching face to face at one point in time, but he could not come to that particular location. Either he was in jail or he was still doing evangelism work. Okay, so we have to really understand and get a thorough understanding of the book of Acts and we'll know what the church is supposed to look like, what the assembly is supposed to look like, the makeup of it, the do's and the don'ts, who's obligated to what and who's not obligated to these things. Okay, but at the end of the day, we all have an obligation, whether you are Gentile or Israelite, to live righteous according to the according to the kingdom of the Most High and according to the instructions given by our creator. Okay, that's bottom line. At the end of the day, most of us, because we identify ethnically as Israelite, Israelites had a, a bigger, had a big obligation, all right, to make sure that they received the commandments, they received these things and all these things, and they had to walk out, out and be an example. If they're not an example, then how, if they around here acting a fool, then how in the world are they going to reach anybody? That they're, because at the end of the day, this is about redemption for mankind. This goes right back to the book, book of Genesis. When Adam fell, who wasn't an Israelite, okay, brought sin into the world, okay, brought sin into the world, so the Most High chose a nation to be an example to mankind. Since y'all don't want to listen to his instruction, well, okay, let me give you somebody that you can see and talk to and be an example. That's the reason why when Christ came down, he came down and gave us a demonstration of what it looks like as an Israelite to walk in the Torah, okay? Not do away with the Torah, okay? But complete it, fulfill it. Give us an example of what it looks like to do it. OK, and how to do it, not being a respect as a person's while doing it. All right. So I love all y'all with the love of Hamashiach, the love of Christ. Man, I pray that you cannot eat without eating from the word of Yah. For man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. I pray that you cannot drink without drinking from the living waters that flows from Hamashiach. Let the light that is within you shine bright outside of you so the world may know that we serve the true and living y'all. Until next time, brothers and sisters, I see y'all in Jacksonville and in Atlanta. We have Sabbath service this weekend at 11 o'clock in Atlanta and 12 o'clock in Jacksonville, Florida. I love all of y'all, man, with the love of my shot. Y'all be blessed. All right, grace to you.